Every time you're working with one of the Medtronic's testers, you may have a variety of different clamps that you'd wind up using. What I have here are four examples of the most common ones. Three of them from the handheld tester and one set from our diagnostic charger. What you'll notice about each of the clamps is that they're actually making two points of contact with each clamp when you connect. There's a serrated edge that's insulated from the body of the clamp. We're going to inject our test signal on one portion and then we're going to sense the reaction that we get with the back portion of the clamp. So in each case you'll see that each jaw is wired separately. These happen to be fiberglass clamps so they've got two individual wires internal. Same with these, what are known as the piranha clamps. Jaws are wired separately. And even with our diagnostic charger clamps, you'll see that this serrated edge has a Teflon backer so that the impulse, test impulse, is signaled here. And then we still have a large four gauge cable along with the, the sense leads that we put inside that cable to make sure we're getting the test data we need for an accurate result. Let's go ahead and do some testing on an aftermarket battery that we have here that happens to have dual terminals. And I want to use this battery to illustrate a couple of very important points. We're going to start out by simply testing at the top terminals on this 800cca uh, rated AGM battery. I connected the tester so it powers up. And um, we will look at it in English. It does its self checks. I'm an unregistered user and we are simply going to do the battery test. Uh, we aren't going to worry about this one for warranty so I'll skip the date, date code information. We are out of vehicle. We'll test it as seen. Here's a top host battery and we'll go ahead. It's an AGM. It is a spiral battery. It is rated in CCAs and 800 is the correct value. Now it's asking for temperature. So I'll go ahead and select next to get the battery temperature. While it's doing the test, it's taking a small, that test impulse, injecting it into the battery and measuring the step change. We know what we put in, now we know what we get out of it. And after this test, printout comes out automatically, we get the decision, good battery. So we like to see. However, this happens to be a side post application for the vehicle that they're going to install it in. So let's go ahead and install some adapters. Let's install the wrong adapters. These are carbon steel. We use carbon steel and stainless steel because of its mechanical strength and its corrosion resistance. Now I got these in nice and firm. You just saw the test be done on these lead posts. Let's retest right here on the steel bolts. We'll go back again and just go back through the menu. Skip the year and month. It is out of vehicle still. But now we're on a side post battery. We want to identify that correctly. It's still an AGM. It's still a spiral. It's still CCAs. It's still 800 CCAs. And there's our temperature off the battery. The issue that we're looking for here is are we going to get a successful test result? Even though we know it tested good up at the top of the battery, What's it going to test like now? It's printing the results. Replace battery. Doesn't look so good. But let's test with the appropriate or the correct stud adapters. Making sure that they're clean and firmly installed. If you've got a stud adapter that looks like this, that's been sitting in a puddle of water or something, throw it away, recycle it, get rid of it. Use clean stud adapters. These terminal faces are clean, I've already checked them. Use a wire brush where needed. In that case, then finger tight should be good. Reconnect your test clamps. And let's do our third test. Okay, here we go. Battery test. Skip the year and month, out of vehicle, side post, AGM, spiral design, CCAs 800, and yes, temperature one more time. Again, when we use the, the carbon steel bolts, we got a failed result or a bad replaced battery decision. And this battery is several years old, by the way, so let's see what comes up this time. 
replace soon. This is a feature that this particular software version in the EXP800 has where it's attempting to be as predictive as possible to make sure that you never put a weak or marginal battery back out in the street in your customer's vehicle. So again, three separate tests on one battery and we got three different results. Top terminal, good result, but it's a side post application. The wrong terminal adapters, we got a replace decision. With the right stud adapters, we did get a decision that doesn't give it a clean bill of health. It does say replace soon, so you want to make sure you're testing where the power is going to be uh, drawn from in that battery application. One other item, as long as you're dealing with any of these side posts, when you buy these aftermarket terminal um, repair kits, you want to make sure you use the bolt that comes with it, not some other 3 8 inch bolt, because this, the depth of this is critical. If you use a bolt that goes in too far, you're going to break the inside of that terminal and you'll take a brand new battery and ruin it. When we talk about proper testing and getting good connection to the battery terminals, here's one example. For the, any of you that use uh, Group 31 style batteries in commercial trucks that have the stainless steel stud, if you test directly on the stainless steel bolt, bolt head, we just lit up the tester. We're going to go ahead and do a test right here. When we talk about making good contact with the lead, if you can get down around the lead pad, that's fine. If you're stuck getting on the, the stud though, you're going to find out that you're going to have a problem. Uh, unregistered user, battery test. We'll skip the month and year. It is out of vehicle. It is a top post battery. It is an AGM. These happen to be AGM batteries. And uh, it is flat plate. And this battery is rated at 700 CCAs. We'll go ahead and take the temperature. This typically takes about uh, six to 10 seconds, printing the result. And clearly we get a replace soon decision. Okay, but it's kind of weak. Maybe we can do better than that. Let's go ahead and install the correct stud adapters. Because of these terminals, I like to tighten them up just a little bit, get a little snug, turn on there. We'll reconnect the tester and retest. Again, this time on the stud adapters, clean lead stud adapters. And we'll just go back through the menu. All the same information, top post, still AGM. Still flat plate, still in CCAs rated at 700. Again, the last time we got a replace soon decision, take that temperature one more time. Let's see if making the correct connection has straightened out our re uh, test result just a little bit where we get the appropriate result for this particular battery. There we go, good battery. Big shift upward. This looks good, let's go ahead and reinstall it in the vehicle and get it down the road. You wanna make sure you get directly on the lead, get your best result possible. A lot of the modern vehicles we're seeing today, they've actually hidden the battery on us. In this case, we've got a manufacturer that provided us some really good jumper posts under hood. They may be fine for jump starting, but let's see if they're still effective when we try to do a battery test from this position. We'll go right here and they've got I'll take the cover off this positive terminal and I'll connect the positive lead. Nice sturdy bolt head there. And we've got another connection here that they provided for the negative side. So the tester turns on and we'll go ahead and start walking through the menu one more time. Now I've already looked at the battery in the trunk and it's a 700 CCA battery. So yes, we're gonna test in English. Unregistered user. And in this case, we're not going to do the full system test. We're still just going to worry about the battery test from this location. Uh, there's no warranty involved here, so we'll just move past that. Uh, we are in vehicle. We are on the jumper posts. And right now, it is a standard flooded battery, automotive style, rated in CCAs at 700. Now, it's asking for temperature. What we'll do, in this case, I'll just take an ambient measurement because that's the best that we've got. We're not looking at, in, we're not looking at under hood temperature. 
So the tool is attempting to test, but what do we get? We get a message that said there's system noise. Now what could that be? What can happen in these cases, we don't know what the resistance of the chassis is or what the resistance of the cable going back to the positive terminal might, terminal might be. So this does provide a, a step down function where it's going to try and give you some kind of a reliable result. But ideally you're always going to go to the battery terminals. We know that in some cases that's not possible. Some of our service providers, as a matter of fact, will not allow their technicians to do anything unless they can see the battery when they open the hood. So these are the things that are changing in the industry. Even keep in mind for hybrid vehicles, none of them can run without a good 12 volt battery. So don't miss that opportunity as well. Test every 12 volt battery, every, every vehicle that comes in the shop. It's a, it's a revenue opportunity for you and it's good service on behalf of your customer. Let's take a look at this though, where the tool is still trying to test and you can see on the screen it's, it's just not going to make it because it can't get a reliable signal based on all the resistance of the chassis ground and the positive terminal length. All right, now we've come around to the back of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and make our connections on the lead terminals here in the battery box. Got the negative clamp on, positive clamp on. Tester turns on. And uh, we're going to go ahead, again, just in this case, we're just doing the battery test. Skip the warranty information. Top post battery, rated in CCAs. 700. We want some measurement and temperature. Here we go. You may have noticed when I had my hand over it, it was over 100 or about 100 degrees. So you want to make sure you're taking the battery temperature, not your hand temperature. Once it completes the test, we can validate and see that, yes, it's still a good battery. That's the result provided. We can share that with the customer then, put that with the service records. Uh, with this particular vehicle and understand and know that the vehicle is safe to go back out in the street. The customer should be well protected and ready until they hit the next scheduled service opportunity. And keep in mind that there are two things that none of our testers will ever have, eyes and ears. We still depend on the technician to make sure that they're making good connection, that if there's other service issues beyond the battery, if you've got corroded connections or cables, you have to make sure that you take care of those issues independent of what the battery service is going to be.